Hello again, it's April here and welcome back to another video. This is Monkey Tries Crochet Part 2. I'm starting early on a Wednesday morning. So I'm a bit sleepy still, but I wanted to get going because I'm going to do something to my latest crochet project, which I'm not quite sure about and I'm a bit nervous about, but I'm going to do it anyway. So I thought I'd capture this historical moment on film. So if you haven't seen the last vlog, I will pop it up here. It was when I started learning from nothing to kind of a little bit of summer summit and this one is going to be part two so it's going to go probably from October no wait it's the end of October now so it's probably going to be like November December maybe a bit of January and then I'll probably pop it up sometime in January so I got back from my holiday in South Africa like three days ago I literally started my next project the day I got back and it is a Christmas scarf for Martin's mum it is using this really funky let me show you so I tangled it up there's really funky Christmas wool, which is like all different colours, like a candy cane, got some glitter in it. It's quite thin. I've been using a 4mm uh, hook at the moment with it. And it took me like ages, it took me probably like a good hour to an hour and a half of redoing it and doing it again to get it right. Just because it was such a thin wool, I'm not used to it. But we got it in the end, I have been working on it. It's a really cute stitch, it looks like this so far. So it's kind of hard to see, but it's like a, a puff stitch. Actually, that's upside down, <laughs> sideways. It's this way around. And the problem is, um, I have been thinking about it since last night. I stopped working on it last night because I was I've been thinking about it and I was just a bit I'm actually I'm doing it as I go, as I'm talking to you by accident. Let me just stick the hook in so I can't undo it anymore. Yeah, I have been thinking about it and uh the YouTube video that I followed said so to make the chain 30 uh, stitches and then plus five that was the starting chain and then this was the mistake she said if you want to make it longer you can just add on multiples of six like make 36 plus five and I thought this chain's looking a bit skinny why don't I just add six on so I did and it looked right when I first started it, making it but as I've been making the stitch now it looks huge let me get the other scarf I've made in comparison to show you. So this is the beautiful scarf I made in my last vlog. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous. I think it's about six, five and a half inches uh, wide that I remembered measuring it yesterday. This is the new scarf. Ow, I just dropped the hook on my toe. For a little thing that really hurt. So this is the new scarf, guys. So like, look how much thicker it is. And this one here is for me, and it works perfectly. This one here is for Martin's mum. It's already quite a bit thicker. And I'm just worried it's going to strangle her because um, she's a bit shorter than I am. She's like only a, a little <laughs> little lady. She's a little lady. And uh, yeah, I'm just worried this is going to be too thick for her, especially if I'm going to make it long as well. So there's this much here. I'm thinking of getting rid of two of these. I don't know how many stitches it is, but if I count the stitches, you know what? It's probably going to be six. So... I popped on Instagram. I popped I popped this poll on Instagram. Uh, dilemma. I think I made the scarf a bit wide. And then I said, should I keep going, make it chunky, do it again and make it thinner? 91% of people, that is 90 people that voted, said keep it chunky. But of course, no, they don't know Martin's mum. <laughs> so, and I just can't stop thinking about it. I can't stop thinking about it. It's just gonna bug me. I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna get do another three hours in. I'm gonna just still still really not like it. So as much as I hate to do it, because I've literally gone through half of this already. I've only got two more left though. And as much as I hate to do it, I think I'm gonna unravel it all. Because I'm gonna be happier with the final result. And it's not really a waste of time because I did spend a good four hours on this <laughs> practicing the stitch. So it's not a waste of time. I haven't updated my the vlog, my crochet vlog for a few weeks. Uh, like maybe three or four. I think the last time I saw you I was making a hat. I don't know. I made a hat anyway. It's like this hat here. It was going to be for a present for someone. But I'm going to keep it for myself because I think it turned out a little bit too chunky. Um, for the person in question. And it goes like this. I can fit it on my head. I think I'll probably wear it. I mean... It's kind of cool. I like it. I think the colours are nice. It's just a bit like chunky, you know, like a bit, a bit thick. 
which is a shame because I actually bought I halfway through making this I needed to buy another ball of wool that matched this and while I was in the shop I bought like eight more balls of wool to make four different hats so yeah sorry one second I have been procrastinating heavily there's so much I want to make so I said that weird really weird there's so much I want to make but I have been heavily procrastinating I have been super busy and also I'm trying to get through this scarf I hate it <laughs> uh let me show you so this is the Christmas scarf that I started remember when I had to redo it because it was too it's getting quite long now though it was too thick is what I was trying to say it's getting too long now uh, not too long it's getting almost as long as I need it just I'm, I really want to get this done today if I can although I'm really busy this is how short it is so it just comes here it needs to be maybe double as long so I'm guessing when I finish this bowl of wool it should be long enough but the reason I hate it guys is because it's taken so long and this thread or whatever you call it it's a thread it's not even wool at this point it's basically a very th fine thread it's so skinny oh, it's taken so long and also it has this like silver stuff through it which really hurts the finger as it rubs over the finger so I can only do it for like maybe half an hour before my fingers like ouch also because it's so small I'm not getting a problem with my wrist which I know people get a problem with I'm getting a problem with this finger because this fingers like always like this it's kind of painful <sighs> I'm just trying, trying to get through it guys I'm just trying to get through it this is mum's Chris this is Martin's mum's Christmas present at this point I don't even know if I like if I like the pattern or the colors or anything but I'm gonna persevere and we're gonna get it done and then I really want to break out well I have to make some more Christmas presents but I'm just gonna make another hat with a thinner wool and then I really want to make myself something guys like a cardigan or a sweater just because I just want to make myself something I've been making things for other people I've made a scarf sure but for myself but like I want to make something I can wear and then I really want to do the blanket for that couch over there because I've got an entire box of wool here I'm pointing to it you can't see it but it's there uh and I've got three bags of wool <laughs> three bags full of wool in the in the wardrobe behind me and it's just too much I need to get rid of some of it I really want to make a scrap yarn sweater but I need to get through all my projects so I have scrap yarn. And that's it. I just wanted to give you an update. So that was the update. I'm going to head down because it's time for work now. Make sure that I'm warm enough downstairs. And I'll see you guys on the next update. It's Monday the 20th of November. I can't remember the last time I popped in for the crochet vlog. But I've done a few things since then. And I thought I'd give you an update. So I think I showed you the scarf I was making for Martin's mum. I finished it it's very Christmassy It's definitely not my style but I think that she'll like it um, I also hated making this so there's that it the, the the wool yarn was so thin this thin and the stitch that I did the bubble stitch like it looks quite nice I think it actually would be nicer in a bit um, of like just a plain wool but it yeah it was like a nice stitch and at first it was oh this is fun learning but it was so thin and it took so long to do it took days I made two things in between like while I was making this because I just couldn't handle I couldn't handle it <laughs> so yeah I got that one I also made another scarf for Martin's aunt but um I don't know about this one because it's so long look at it this is in half look how long it is I, I made it I measured it against my scarf but as I was making it the wool is so thick I think it got heavier and heavier and like weighed itself down and this is what it looks like on okay so you could literally wrap this around you three times if you wanted to um that's that's like I, I wrap it around three times I'll show you you can do it guys like you can really bundle up for Christmas um so yeah I made this one this was this was fun to make uh really easy to make uh problems kind of the same some some, some problems making it but when I when I got there it was fine but kind of the opposite problem of the skinny wool this wool was very chunky and I followed a couple of tutorials on how to make different ones they were like ribs they had 
they went like in and out in and out in and out but this wool was so chunky that it kind of made it really thick and I don't know I just I just didn't like it I just didn't like it I undid it and I redid it with three different styles three times and I finally just settled on good old I don't even know what I don't know any of the names of the crochet stitches all I know is like I, I watch someone do it and I, I'll come like on a tutorial and I'll just know in my head oh, I just pull through all three or I go in twice or something like I do not remember the names of any of them so yes I've made two scarves we're sending these in the mail to Martin's mum with some presents we got from South Africa um, and Martin's dad and their aunt Martin's aunt basically Martin's whole family we're sending all these presents to his mum his his dad and his aunt his aunt lives with his mum at the moment she moved from Spain a while ago and she lives with them so yeah so they can wear it before Christmas I think that'll be nice and also I made a hat did I show you guys the hat I was making I was making it for Martin's aunt to begin with but I can turn out too chunky um it was really chunky guys and I wasn't comfortable wearing it either it was too big but my mum came to the visit a couple of weeks ago and she really liked it so I said would you like this this hat as a present of my love and affection towards you but also I don't want it hanging around the house <laughs> so she took it she took it I think she liked it so I wanted to keep making I wanted to make the hat anyway because I really want to see what it looks what like it what it was like with a bit of a lighter thinner wool what do you say lighter weight um I made this one ready Ta-da! So I made this one with this wool. One sec. I've got this huge ball of wool. I can probably make two more hats out of this, or a scarf or something. But it's like all kind of different colours. I thought it was really nice. And um, yeah, it's a lot thinner. I really like it. I also got this one. It's the same colour, the same wool, different colours. I'm gonna make one for Martin. I have to whisper so he doesn't hear me. And um, maybe for Martin's dad too. And I might make one for Martin's mum and Martin's dad. <laughs> I just, I just gotta make stuff, and I don't want to keep all the stuff in my house. And as Christmas is coming up, I might actually send this one to my sister. But the thing is, I might do make a bubble hat for the top. The hat, the top turned out really good, but um, I had some troubles with the. I always have trouble like stitching. So look, this here. See how it kind of like goes down. It. I think it got tight here, like where the slip stitches are because I, I I joined them with a slip stitch so when it's on put that towards the back because otherwise it looks like this like it kind of looks a bit weird see how it's got like it's not straight across um I think it's because it goes tighter under here and see how it's kind of like going down so like I mean guys just I mean not like that that's <laughs> that's that's not a look but this with a little bubble on top I think that'll be so cute gonna make that for my sister and send it to her but um I really want a break from making scarves and hats now that's what I've been doing for the last like month uh, I do want to make some more before Christmas but we're actually going to visit Martin's family after Christmas like in between Christmas and New Year so I have ages before before that so that's fine so the next thing I have on my list of things wait one second <laughs> I'm still wearing that hat all right the things I have on my list of things to do I want to make some more Christmas presents for friends I really want to make and also just because I really want to make them but also because I guess giving presents is nice I really want to make um a lip balm holder like a mushroom lip balm holder um I want to make some cup holders this isn't a good symbol is it but I want to make like a cup <laughs> a cup holder so that goes around glass jars or tins or something I really want to make an iPod case thing maybe a marker bag that looks like an orange or a kiwi or something um there's so much stuff i want to do guys and guys i have to tell you something okay i never knew when i got into crocheting that it would also sync so seamlessly so well with another one of my true loves minecraft but guys i found by quite by accident minecraft crochet it wasn't actually accident I was complaining to one of my friends on whatsapp that I didn't have time to do anything I was working so much last week and the week before and I was like all I want to do is crochet and play minecraft and then it hit me like a lightning bolt straight from the heavens minecraft crochet and I thought to myself 
is that a thing? Have, has anyone ever thought of that before? Am I the most original person on the planet? I'm not. Um, turns out there's 100,000 Minecraft crochet projects out there and I want to do at least 73 of them. So I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to wait until like a lot of my wool's gone and a lot of my projects are done. But I think that would be so fun to do just for myself because as an adult human, as a fully formed human adult, it's really difficult to find Minecraft themed clothes. I searched so hard for a Minecraft Christmas sweater or a Minecraft hoodie or a Minecraft hat or anything, right? Creeper related. It's fine. I love a creeper. And they're all for like eight year olds. Guys, adults also want to dress like children. Come on. So I can just make one myself. I found a Minecraft Christmas sweater on the official Minecraft website. It was £65 and it was out of stock. So yeah, I can just make one myself. Probably not for this year, but anyway, I just wanted to tell you because I'm so excited, guys. There's so much poss there's so much possibilities and I'm just so excited. But I'm just going to leave you there. I'm going to go now. I actually have a lot of work to do, so I'm going to be crocheting probably for the rest of the day. But I'm going to start a new project tomorrow and I'll pop back and tell you what it is. But until then, um, I'll see you on... Yeah, I'll see you later. Bye. It's been a while since I filmed for the crochet vlog and I wanted to give you an update on my latest project I've been working on. I haven't filmed any of it. I've just been getting on with it. I've been doing it while I've been watching TV the last couple of weeks. I think I watched the entire four seasons of Succession while making this. <laughs> so I'm sure saying that you're probably expecting something big. It's not big, it was just really complicated and I had to undo things a whole bunch of times. It was the first time I used a pattern, a written pattern, not with any marks, just with like words and letters and stuff. And I had to do the magic ring or the magic circle about 1000 times and I hated it so much. And I was working with the tiniest crochet hook. I have 2.5 millimeters. And I also had to work with some white yarn which was very, very difficult to look, to see the stitches. So, what am I making? I'm making a little toy, like a little stuffed toy. Uh, it's a Warhammer toy. These are the little eyes. And I've just finished making the legs this morning. They aren't the same size. <laughs> One is a little bit bigger than the other. Um, yeah. And what else do I have? This is the jaw. This is the body. It's going to be a squig. So a squig is from Warhammer. I'll pop a picture up. And the guy at the Warhammer shop, Will, we see him like pretty much every week. We chat with him every week. We go to like paintings, um, painting evenings, sometimes in the weekends. We do like competitions there and stuff. It's just like a little hobby that Martin's more into, Martin's into it, but I do a little bit on the side too. Um, it's like painting miniatures. You can play with them too, but I just paint them. So I wanted to make like a little, just something like a Christmas present. And I just thought, what if they have Warhammer crochet things? You can, you can find, you can find them. You can find them online. I did. I found them. I Googled it. I found them. And there was a squig, which is pretty cute. So, and it looked pretty easy. So that's what I've done so far. Now I've been coming to the assembling stage. So I haven't, I haven't filmed any of the crocheting parts, but... I thought I could film a little bit of the assembling because it's the first time I've made like a toy or anything like that before. Apart from these eyeballs, but I don't think they counted. Right, so we have the body, the jaw, the eyes and eyelids, a nose, four teeth and two legs. And the hardest things to do were definitely the legs. I really struggled with them. Um, I had to redo one of the legs, I think it was this one, this first one here, because I didn't stuff it enough, I don't think. Uh, also, there was a lot of decreasing, and if you can see, like, the amount of holes that are in here is ridiculous. So, yeah. And then I made this one, this one was a lot easier, this was the second one, I think this is what it's meant to look like. I don't know why, I mean, I don't know why they turned out, one turned out, because I have counted the stitches, and they have the same amount of stitches, but one is a lot taller than the other one. Which is kind of annoying. This was probably the easiest one to do, the body and this one, because they were kind of the same. And then 
moving on second hardest were the teeth especially these little ones here because you have to start with a magic circle and then I couldn't see the stitches because they're just so it's so white and also the crochet hook which is this one here literally the smallest hook known to man I mean they maybe go smaller but it was so and like holding it but like ugh, you know ugh. okay my hands are cramping up just thinking about it but now I basically have to assemble it so I'm basically just sewing things like sewing the eyelids on like this so I thought it might be better to have it on the desk here because I have been doing everything in the lounge so I'm going to sit up on the desk I'm going to try and do this now before lunch I actually had the day off today it's 10 30 so try and do it in an hour and a half see if we can get it finished I marked all the um, parts with pins like it told me to but I'm going to be honest I'll probably just take this off because I need to sew the eyes in I need to sew everything in separately and um, it's going to be very awkward with all this on but I just thought I'd show it to you because it kind of looks funny like this <laughs> yeah, I mean it's just so awkward because it keeps moving so and you're meant to pin it but it keeps coming out everything was falling off so I just took it all off again so stupid. We'll have a break. Yeah. And we'll get a Kit Kat. We don't have any Kit Kats. Yeah, we'll just grab a coffee then. Okay. Finally got the eyes on. Um, I think they puffy, a bit puffy, very bulbous. I'm going to do the eyelids now. They go kind of like around the eye like that. I think, I mean, that's what, that's what it looks like in the photo. I think my eyes are a bit like far apart from each other they really should be this one should be like here because the nose is meant to go like in the middle they're meant to be quite squished but uh, I've already sewed it in now and I'm not gonna do it again so that's just how they're gonna be <laughs> it's so derpy quick update I've got the eyelids on I've got the nose again not centered oh why did I put why is everything off center? Uh, you know what? It looks like it looks like the pigs from Angry Birds. I don't know. Maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't. To me, it does. Doesn't look anything like the, the the toy right now. I have now sewed all the body parts together apart from the legs. It's so bad, guys. <laughs> I hate this so much I hate all you know these small fiddly bits I don't enjoy it this is what he looks like <laughs> so derpy I I mean look from here it's it's fine but like all the teeth and the teeth aren't so done properly they're not pointy like the picture was and you can see like all the stitches and and all the stuff under the eyes I was gonna, I was thinking about this last night, I was gonna unsew the eyes and sew them closer together. I can't guys, I can't do it. I have, I'm losing my will slowly. And I just looked on the PDF of the next thing I have to follow. And I don't know how to do it. So. So this is the PDF, I have to shove the needle between between I don't have a needle this long I have to shove a needle between between it and then I have to stick the le the leg on but the needle's through it so do I put the leg on before I put it through the body I don't or do I put it on this side I don't get it and then somehow it magically is on here we go Let's give it a go. I have done it. What I was doing wrong is I was putting the needle through the leg, but I was coming out like this to the side. And obviously it wasn't working. I didn't realize I had to come out like the same side, like this. So <laughs> no way is he gonna stand up. I'm sorry. He's just gonna sit down, I think, like this. His legs do move. Um, now I just need to do the crest and the antlers because it's for Christmas. I've got three minutes left in my memory card so I've got to make this a quick one. I finished my little monster guy. I didn't film anything else. <laughs> Oops. But 
I just finished him this morning. He's so cute. I love him so much. <laughs> this is what he looks like. Oh. And he's got a little um, spikies on his back and he's got big old googly eyes and I mean he's not, he does have some bits that are just not sewed in very well at all and he's got this little antlers that are retractable retractable detach detachable um and yeah i just think he's so cute so that's him he's all finished and i will i'm going into town in like 10 15 minutes and i'm gonna drop it off at the warhammer shop because it's for the manager there i think i said that and i hope he likes it i think he's so cute i it's my first one i've made and i know that i was really harsh on myself when i was making him but when he's all come together, like, I just think he's the cutest thing. And I almost don't want to give him away. I want to keep him because he's so cute. I learned so much doing this. It was very, very, very frustrating at times. I had to redo a lot of stuff. But it was really fun. Like, most of it was kind of fun, I guess. It was frustrating. But I learned so much. The magic spring or the magic circle, almost a pro. Pretty much a pro. Still need to do a lot of things differently, like... I kind of rush things, I think. Um, so things kind of turn out a bit wonky, you know. I probably should take my time, like certain things are making sure things in the right place. Uh, weaving in ends, there's a lot of like loose ends here, don't tell anyone. But I think overall I did a really good job and I'm really happy with him. So I'll let you know what Will says, who's the manager. Maybe I can do some sneaky filming. But that's all for now. So me and the squig are off into town. Um, yeah, I'm moving on to the next project. Doing a little photo shoot. <laughs> He's very photogenic. This isn't very photogenic though, this sheet is a bit wrinkly. Look how good the photo is Martin's got. So much better than mine. It's almost like he's a photographer. Everything can climb over this sort of stuff. The only thing that's impassable is inside this building. Impossible. What are you going to do? What do you want to do? Uh, see, I'll give you one off the shelf because I know it's on the way. It's uh, Monday. I'm not really fit for the camera, but I wanted to show you this before I sent it in the mail. Um, I got my friend Liz this, this really fun book that I saw just in one of the National Trust shops when we were there uh, a few weeks ago. And I think it's really cute. She really loves mushrooms. And I think this is a really nice book. I actually kind of wanted it for myself. But I'll send it, I guess. And to go with it, I've been wanting to make one of those little mushroom things. That you put lip balm in. This one here. Um, so I made one last night. And this is how it turned out. It's a little bit wonky. Like some of the stitches are a bit... I think I did too many stitches like here. Because it goes out a little bit and I definitely did not sew these on evenly like actually if you just look from this side it's okay <laughs> but around here it definitely gets a little bit uneven and yeah it's one of those things where you pop the lid off and I got her a little lip balm to go inside so she doesn't get chapped lips in the winter and then you can tie that on like a strap on your bag so it just hangs from your bag and I think the idea is super cute, the execution is okay, I mean it's a present and it's the first one I made, so hopefully she likes it. But yeah, I'm going to send those two now as a, uh, for Christmas, and I also need to do a couple of other things to send for Christmas too, so I'll show you those. But yeah, this is pretty fun. After doing my squig the other day, um, I learned lots about the magic ring, the magic circle, so this wasn't too hard because I actually tried to do this before I did the squig and I couldn't even make these circles so yeah definitely improving just need to keep practicing. I'm just off to the post office to um, post some orders and Christmas presents but I just wanted to show you this before I go. I put the pom-pom on I don't know if it's too small but this is the hat I hope she likes it I'm not sure she'll like these colors but I think it's kind of cute. Don't 
Ta-da! Aren't they beautiful? It's Friday the 29th of December and um, I'm on my Christmas break. I had 13 days and I currently have five, six left. So it's going fast. I haven't really been doing anything. I kind of gave myself the first four days to just superly chill. Superly, is that a word? Superly chill. It kind of um, carried on though for a couple more days. I have not done much at all. I don't think I've done any drawing or painting or anything for Mike Mintaka. I have just been watching TV, watching movies and crocheting. I have relaxed so much. I have become a formless, shapeless pile of goo with a crochet hook. <laughs> That's basically where we're at right now. So I'm getting kind of like, you know when you relax, I'm getting kind of bored now, which I'm thinking is the sweet spot to start doing some art again. But before I jumped on that today, I wanted to give you an update on my crochet because I'm going to be crocheting in the next few days too, just not as much as I was like last week. I have been making these beautiful circles, which I just showed you. They're so lovely. I worked, I did about maybe a quarter of them before Christmas and then I took a break to do all the hats and everything that I made, the squig, and then I jumped back into it. And I actually did something... Um, when I jumped back in, because I was like a bit confused about where I was. I couldn't really remember what I was doing. So, I went back on the blog that I, it was from TL Yarn Crafts. I'll put all the description, all the links and everything below. But I made this, these swatches. They're very um, basic. They're not very pretty. But basically, I went through, because I had some um, wool. I had some wool or yarn, whatever you prefer to call it, in balls that had the tags on them still and then I had them that didn't have the tags on them like I'd ripped them off so I had to colour match the tags that I had them on which wasn't that hard they're all kind of different colours so this one's teal and I just kind of made like all these um sorry the window's open I know it's December but I'm really hot right now so the window's open it's very blowy today I made these very crude swatches basically and I popped them in this very lovely handmade envelope that they always fall out of because it doesn't have a, a lid like a, a top to it and then on the front I wrote uh, TL Young Afghan Blanket that's what I'm following Starcraft DK which is the yarn I'm using and most importantly what I always forget the hook 5.5 mil which was in the in the blog of the tutorial that I was following so that's fine and then I also went through because I kept having to go back to the blog because basically I'm not using my imagination for this one. This is like the very first blanket that I'm making that I started to make. Apart from the one in the that was in the lounge that I'm not going to talk about that one because that was a disaster. So I had to keep going back onto her blog, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling down to find the picture of the colours because I'm basically copying her colours too. Um, so I just made myself this little chart. So. The outside bit is like the border and then the three circles on the inside correspond to the three circles on the thing. And then I went through and I just wrote them down so I didn't have to keep going on the blog every time I wanted to make the circle. And then, I haven't done it, but I put a line through the ones that I've done like this all the way to the end when I'd finished it. So I know that I just have the board left. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory because I'm the only one doing it. It was just in case I kind of got bored or I did something else and I came back to it in like a month but I think I'm gonna finish it now because I'm so close I'm not really but I feel close so basically I've made 99 of these rounds the puff stitches so it's puff stitch puff stitch puff stitch and then I need to do like granny square outside to make it a square and then I need to join them all together so <clears throat> I'm doing it from her blog and then she also links to tutorial or like blogs that she followed to do it one is that to make the square and then one is to do a join as you go which I have never done so my plan now is to go through organize these because it's just they're just 99 of these on the desk um organize them and then I'm gonna learn how to do the outside it should be pretty simple I just need to learn how to do one stitch that I haven't done before it's called a stand-in double crochet, I think, or stand-in triple crochet, depending on where you are. And it's just how to join onto the circle. And then from there, it's just like 
or normal granny square round. So it should be pretty easy. I'm going to do nine when I finished. No, there's a nine colours, there's nine variants, there's 11 of each, so that's 99. I'm going to do 11, so I'm going to do all 11 of these, the border, and then I'm going to block them all, and then I'm going to uh, sew, weave their ends in of 11 before moving on to the next 11. Because if I wait till the end, I worked it out, there's four colours in each, there's two ends for each colour, so that's like, I did work it out, let's just say it's 100, so there's like four, eight, there's like 800 ends I'd have to weave in. So if I just do it like each 11, I can kind of break it up. So that's my plan, but I haven't um, filmed any of this, I don't think, apart from when I was initially trying to make the puff stitch, which I found really, really difficult. But um, I don't think I filmed any of this, I've just been, like I said, on the couch, potato style crocheting. So I probably won't film either, like this kind of stuff that you've seen, I think probably in my last um, crochet vlog when I was doing granny squares. But I will, uh, if I come up with any problems, or if I remember, I'll pop back in to give you updates. If not, yeah, this is where I'm at right now double crochet to attach here and I'm the type of person that I like to leave all my tails till the end I don't like to stop and sew into yarn over and then hold it grab your center and we are going to insert inside the V any V you want you enter and pull through two that is our standing double crochet and yarn over and pull through two, just like a normal double crochet. Now the pattern I've only got one. Four. But I've only got one. me april i'm in a i'm in a hotel room there's a bird behind me on the wall i don't know if you can see there we go he's a grebe a grebe apparently and um this is for the crochet vlog so yesterday we drove down south from up north that's the direction that we that we went north to south. i haven't filmed for a long time guys <laughs> north to south and we're down south currently by the water um in a place called Halen Island, if you're down south, you may know it. Uh, Martin's brother's got a wedding today, and it's, we have to leave in a couple of hours. So in the car, I did some, I started a new crochet project. I got some really cool wool that's like cool colors, autumn colors, and I crocheted in the car. Took a little video every row I did, and this is currently what it looks like. Oops. This. Can you guess what it is? Can you guess what it is? It's going to be a hexagon cardigan, hopefully. I love these colors so much and it's so easy to do. Like the stitch is just granny stitch. So I'm gonna work on it like in and out, like in between doing stuff. I said to Martin, can we sneak this in to his bag so I can do it at the wedding and then at the dinner and then at the party. But he said, I, he said probably not because it would be a bit awkward of me just sitting in the corner doing crochet. I don't think so. But uh, I can't sneak my book in either because my book's too big. Look how big it is. I need smaller things with which to sneak in to social functions. Um, but I don't go to any social functions. This is like the first one I've been to. I'm going to say in like four years. <laughs> so 
I just gotta suck it up and do it guys do the small talk do the smiling have maybe have a couple of mojitos uh, loosen up a bit I just get like you know I just the people and the, the all the people all right well I'm gonna go I'm gonna do a little bit of crochet while we're getting ready and then yeah I'll just like we'll see how much I do on this trip it's three days plus another car ride back up north so I should really get like a bit done I think hello I come to you from the hotel floor um it is time to go home we're back in the bag it's like it's like 6 40 we've been up since about six we're gonna go try and leave early because we want to go to warhammer world on the way home so it's like an hour out of the way kind of but it's still kind of on the way um i just wanted to give you a quick crochet update yesterday we we went for a walk in the morning along halen island along the billy trail which is kind of like an old um it's an old railway line that they turned into a path and it was really nice we saw some birds we wouldn't want to go back with our binoculars and camera and do some bird watching like next time we're down here um that was really cool and then we had lunch and in the garden there were there was this pen of like um what are they the zebra finch and it was awesome um even though i don't like seeing birds in cages but it was really cool to see the zebra finches in real life oh and then basically went back to martin's parents house with like all the family and we were there for ages just chilling i guess and then we had pizza for dinner but i basically spent the entire time like five hours on and off crocheting so i i'll show you what i did I forgot we also went to the Penny Arcades, which are like these things they have in the seaside towns in England, where they have like the arcades with all the machines that you can like grab the toys and things. But they also have these things called Penny Arcades where uh, there's like, uh, but I'll put some footage on, but you basically waste a lot of 2p coins just to get a suite or something. So we spent a while doing that and it was freezing at the beach. We had a quick run to the beach to like just look at the view and then run back inside because it was so cold. But it was pretty fun. So this is a crochet I did in the car. I think I finished that in the car. And that's how big it was. And then this is the crochet that I started yesterday. So I'm just on the hotel floor right now. Um, I started this yesterday and this was about four hours on and off. Um, I had to redo a whole row twice because I did the stitch wrong. But I'm not sure how much I can get done today in the car on the way home. I have, like, a lot of time in the car. But the thing is, I need to, like, measure this. And I need to look at the YouTube video again and figure out what to do. So I'm just going to get this one to the same size as this one. And then maybe we'll see what time it is then. But, yeah. Um, crocheting on holiday. Pretty fun. Pretty fun. Now i got to pack my bag. It's Friday night. I'm on the floor. And I... I, this is for the crochet video. I haven't edited it yet. I don't know how long it is. But the last things I recorded was when we were at the wedding. And I did my hexagon cardigan. I started, started it. Well, since then, I have finished all of my squares for the granny square blanket that I'm going to put on that couch over there. In the you can't see it, but it's over there, I promise. And I'm very excited. All 99 are done. And all I have to do now is sew them together. But... There's one small problem. These are all the granny squares. Um, I have 11 of them. I have all them all in their beautiful color piles. And I've sewed in all the ends, weaved in all the ends. But can you see the problem? I'm missing seven squares. <laughs> where, where did they go? I literally, every time I made nine or 11, there's 11 of each. I put them on the shelf and I did that for all of them and I definitely made 11 of each. I remember doing it. Um, I have searched everywhere for these seven squares, missing seven squares. Can't find them anywhere. Can't find them anywhere. But it's not a problem because I actually was going to take a break anyway. I didn't want to finish the blanket. I mean, I do want to finish it, but I wanted to like have a break and do my hexagon cardigan as a sorbet, a palette cleanser, if you will. So my plan was to like, forget that anyway, I just wanted to show you the squares to show you that I've done, then put that away from maybe a week or so, and then come back to it. Cause I think sewing all the squares together is gonna be a really big project and I don't wanna do it right now. 
so hopefully in that time I'm gonna give everything a bit of an organization again those drawers over there my desk everything's a bit of a mess again and I also have some new art supplies coming from Jackson's art next week so when I do my organization I'll like I need to put those supplies away so I'll probably organize it then over a weekend as soon as Burb Fest is finished because I just need to get through Burb Fest first and then I can do everything else but um my hexagon cardigan is beside me I'll show you I think I'll just refresh you with, with what I've done so far so this is as far as I got with the hexagons um they're only this big I think there's like 13 rows and I made two of them but the thing is uh now I need to figure out what to do I need to watch the, I don't think these are big enough at all so basically I need to watch the video and figure out how big I need to make them and then also because I'm gonna need to make mine bigger and longer than the YouTube I need to figure out how to upsize it I have two more balls when these guys run out but uh, I might need to buy some more of these uh, I might do that this weekend actually because even if I don't like this is such a gorgeous color I could make a match in I can make a matching beanie or something oh my gosh so yeah I might get some of these I've also lost the crochet hook so <laughs> oops so I'm gonna go back to that video that I watched and figure out how she makes it but at the same time I found another video uh that it looks really helpful and I kind of was speed watching it like skipping through it but I'll probably watch that again and she shows you how to make it um bigger so like upsize it because um I, I'm gonna need mine to be quite large because I'm not a little so <laughs> I need to figure out how to do that but I think I can get the initial like size in of just like the arms how big I want the arms to be and then I think you need to add more to the back and more to the front um I will try and show like what it looks like online I'm not terribly comfortable being like full body on camera but I would like to get more comfortable with that so I'll try and do some modeling for you later on in the video and kind of explain it a bit better because it's easier to understand seeing it rather than telling it but that's it that's everything oh there is one more thing actually I want to do before I go to bed because it's actually quite late it's it's almost 10 o'clock now and I want to read a bit but there's one more thing I want to show you so this is all the wool that's left over how is there so much so on the blog she said that she bought um this is TL Yarn Crafts, by the way. That's where I'm getting the banker from. She bought two rolls of each colour for the squares. And then three rolls of the granite to put in between, like, to sew them, you know. And, look. I used the same weight wool. I used the same crochet hook size. So, I think my squares must be the same size, right? But, um how come I still have like a full ball of wool in each one and then like basically almost a full one what am I gonna do with all this there's definitely some amazing colors in here I think they would make such a nice like striped sweater or something there's lots of clothing that I want to try and make like cardigans and sweaters and um other things shawls maybe my mom wants a shawl actually she asked me she didn't like demand it but she loved the bag I made her that's in my last video but she said that she would really love a shawl and actually my mum and her partner are moving to Bulgaria in March and they're coming to visit us on March the 2nd before they go that would give me not even it would give me a it would give me about five weeks I could make a shawl in five weeks and these are lovely colors I think I could do it okay Let's put that on the to-do list. Let's see if we can finish that in this video too. This video is crazy. If we get everything done, we would have done like Christmas presents, a blanket for the couch, a hexagon cardigan, and a shawl for my mum. Incredible. I think a shawl would be really fast. It's just basically granny stitch, right? Okay, I'm cool. I'm happy about this. Let's do it. Well, not right now. I'm, I'm going to bed now. <laughs> and then I'm going to finish the blanket. And then I'm gonna, and then we'll do it. All right. <laughs> okay, goodbye. i got to get to bed. I'm tired. It's actually March now. It's halfway through March. So this vlog is a little bit late. But there's lots of crochet stuff on there. I kind of um, forgot to film the last few months. I don't think I'm going to do another big, long crochet video. Because I have just been enjoying just doing it in the evening. And not showing anyone anything. I may just do a, like, what I made kind of video. Um, every couple of months which I think could be fun 
but I wanted to share with you three projects that I didn't really talk about much. One of them was the poncho I made for my mum. So I, my mum, when she came last time, she mentioned that she really liked, she would really like a poncho. So I made a poncho for her and it turned out really cool. For the train, I've also got this, which is my newest crochet project. It's gonna be for my mum. Um, it's gonna be a poncho and I started it today. I just need to do one more row because then I repeat that one. So I just want to get to the part where I repeat and then I know what I'm doing and then I can take this on the train. So it's quite a big, <laughs> this is going to be like basically my entire backpack, but it's going to, I'm on the train for four hours tomorrow. So I need something to keep me company and I don't like reading on the train kind of, I just don't like it and I don't like, I don't like just staring at people. So this is, this is going to be it. I don't like drawing on the train either. Anyway, this is it. This is it. I'm just popping up quickly to show off my poncho before I give it to my mum. She's going to be here in like 10 minutes. Um, the room's a bit of a mess because my sister's staying with us, so ignore that. But uh, I finished the poncho a couple of weeks ago, maybe a week ago. I haven't shown anything. I've been really bad with filming crochet stuff. I've just been getting on with it. But I thought I'd show you the poncho now and then I'm going to give it to mum when she gets here. So yeah, let's have a look. So it looks like this is purple. That's what it looks like. It's not my colour personally, but I think my mum will like it. And I actually kind of want to make one for myself. <laughs> it's so cool. This is what it looks like. So, yeah, it was really easy to make. Um, I'm going to give it to mum and I'll see. I'll, maybe I'll try and get her reaction. She really liked the bag last time, so I'm hoping she likes this too. That's it. Do you mind if I record it a little bit for the video? Mm. I'm doing it now. <laughs> Do you like it? I love it. Nice. I think she liked it a lot. She said, I didn't film everything, but she, she went on about it quite a bit, actually. The second thing is my cardigan, which I'm wearing now. The sleeves are really long. I definitely learned a lot making this, especially about blocking and how you can block something to make it really, really big. But um, I really like it. It's really fun. So I'm in the lounge. I wanted to show you how far I've gotten with my um, cardigan. I won't model it for you, but you can kind of see the sleeve here. It looks really cool. It's kind of like puffy, balloony, um, like this, which is really nice. Okay, so I have one of my old hoodies, which is about maybe two or three years old. It's quite baggy on me, which is what I wanted the cardigan to be. So I want it to be a little bit bigger, like rather than snug, just so it's nice and cozy. So basically you just lined it up to like the armpit here and on the other side to the armpit and then this is kind of like how much I need it to cover. So what I think I'm going to do is I've been watching a video where someone shows you how to kind of like make it bigger and what she does is she works her way here down around and then back and up again and that will also make it longer coming down this way and it will follow this pattern like this l pattern here so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to work around around probably until it's like maybe here and then i'll do the back join the back up and then the front will be a little bit less i think so that's my plan <laughs> i'm not really sure but i'm gonna work with one i probably do like four rows yeah like four rows on this side four rows on this side and then next to like three or four in the middle on the back and then the front will be a little bit smaller just because you need to have a little bit of room here for your neck and stuff i think but yeah i'll figure it out as i go how many dwarves are there in the world because they're going to kill them all It's really long, like this is how long it is. And then the last thing I made was the blanket, finally, for the couch over there in the corner.
so cool and I love it so much. It was probably the, my favourite thing I've made so far. So that was the part two of Monkey Tries Art Supplies, I guess. It's kind of Monkey Tries Crochet. Um, like I mentioned, I don't think there'll be another one. I probably would just either show them on a vlog or do like a mini kind of what I made crochet video every couple of months. But I hope that you enjoyed following me along. I think I can now say I'm not a beginner anymore, although there's still a lot to learn, but I can definitely think I can pick things up um, as I go now and it's not like, you know, I'm getting I'm getting the hang of it, so I think that's pretty cool. But yeah, that's all for me. So have a lovely rest of your day or your week and I will catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.